What's going on everybody here is another week at the Home Theater Hobbies and this week we have our full review of the Q Acoustics M4 Soundbar Super Bass Package. So let's get to it. Well first of all if you are new to the channel welcome. On this channel you'll find things like product reviews, unboxings, comparisons, and talk about basically all things home theater. So click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be alerted anytime we upload new content. This is the M4 soundbar from Q Acoustics, and this is the 7060i subwoofer, also from Q Acoustics. And together, they make the M4 Super Bass soundbar package. And I actually kind of like that name. I think Super Bass is pretty funny, and I'll explain why they call it that in a second. But the M4 soundbar is a part of Q Acoustics soundbar lineup, which includes the M2 sound bass, the M3 soundbar, and this, the M4 soundbar. Now the M4 features two two and a half inch drivers with a four by six inch bass unit or down firing subwoofer there just under the speaker. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It is three and a half inches high by 5.6 inches deep and just under 40 inches long. It weighs 10.8 pounds. The soundbar supports Bluetooth Aptex version 4 with up to eight devices at any given moment. Now the 7060 subwoofer has an eight inch driver with a frequency response from 35 hertz to 200 hertz. It is 17 and three quarters of an inch high, just under six inches deep, and just under 19 inches long. It weighs 24 and a quarter pounds. Now let's move on to design. The M4 soundbar is 40, just under 40 inches long, like I said. And on the front, you've got the metal grill. Down there at the bottom, in the center, you've got the Q Acoustics logo. And just above that, behind the grill, you have the IR sensor for the remote. Now on each side, you have the two and a half inch drivers. They feature balance mode radiator technology, also known as BMR. Now the point and purpose of BMR is to give you wider dispersion and better sound quality from smaller speakers. And that dispersion basically means that you'll get 180 degrees dispersion, both horizontally and vertically. Now because you get this dispersion, if you sit this on the table, Q Acoustics recommends that you sit it flush with the edge of the table so you can get the best sound quality. Now I'm gonna pick this up so you can look at the top of the sound bar. And the first thing you notice is that wedge shape. Now the cool thing about the wedge shape is they put all the connections here on the left hand side. So they're easy to access and even the power switch that we'll talk about in a moment is here so it's easy to access. Now, only thing you have on top are three buttons. On the left and right of center, you have your volume button, so you can just turn it up and turn it down. And in the center, you have your power slash source selection button. A long press turns it on or off, and a short press cycles through the source inputs. Just below that, you have your LED indicator that changes color based on your source selection, or if this is in standby mode. Now moving on to the bottom of the speaker, as you can see, you've got the bass unit sitting here just off center. This is the four by six inch bass unit and it fires downward. And since it fires downward, this needs to have a little bit of air or space beneath it. So they do supply these rubber feet that you can put on if you mount this on a table. Now I will say these holes come pre-drilled for these feet. Now, because this has the built-in subwoofer here and the two drivers, this is a 2.1 soundbar. Now, Q Acoustics calls this whole package the Super Bass Package because it has the built-in subwoofer here and you're getting an additional subwoofer. So basically, you get more bass. Moving on to the rear, the first thing you notice is you have these two sections or these two holes here, and they are for the included wall mount. If you want to wall mount this soundbar, you can. It comes with this nice sturdy metal plate that you can screw into your wall and mount it. Now, I didn't do that because this is just a review and I don't plan to keep it. I don't want to just mount it to my wall, 
but this is pretty sturdy and I think it'll work pretty well. To the left of that, you have your connections for all of your different inputs. Starting at the top, you've got your optical, digital optical input there. Next to that, you have your line in or your three and a half millimeter auxiliary input. And next to that, you have your main power switch on off. Just below that, you have your power port so you can plug it in. And you have your subwoofer out connection there and your two RCA cable or connections there. Just above that, you have a little button that you can push if you want to pair Bluetooth. Now, one of the cool things about this soundbar is it comes with all the cables you need, including RCA cables, a lining cable, and a digital optical cable, along with a power cable for both the US and UK. But one thing it doesn't come with is a subwoofer line cable, so you will need that. It also, if you notice, it doesn't have an HDMI connection. If you're looking for an HDMI connection, look at that M3 soundbar because it does have HDMI. The next thing I wanna talk about is the included remote. This is a pretty small remote, which is standard for things like this. It's flat, uh, on the top it's got your little sensor that you'll point at it, and you've got your power button, your source button, your two volume buttons, and a mute button. And that's pretty much it. On the bottom you have the place where you put the battery, you just push it in, pull it out, and the battery comes out. Now let's talk about the 7060 subwoofer. And as you can see, it is a nice rectangular box that's nice and smooth, has rounded edges. Right here, you've got your eight inch driver there and down there on the bottom left or bottom right, I guess, you have the Q Acoustics Q, which is pretty cool. If you turn it down that way, it's pretty featureless. If you turn it to the right, also pretty featureless along the back still featureless and if you turn it this way you've got just a couple of features but those features are important and they are cool so let's talk about them here you've got your level so you can change the volume up and down you've got your crossover setting right here you can change it up and down or you can set it to AV so your AV chooses what the crossover setting will be and in the center of that you've got your little LED indicator to let you know if it's on or off but to reach all the connections, you just pull this little door off. It's magnetically attached, it's metal. Nice heavy door, pretty nice. And inside there you have all of the connections. Right here, you have your on slash auto button, so you can put it in standby or auto mode. Just next to that, you have the phase adjustment, so you can go zero or 180 degrees. You have your RCA cable input here, or your subwoofer cable input here. You've got your power switch there, and right there you have your power connection, and just below that you have a fuse. And how do you route all your cables in here? Well, there's a little hole in the case right there. You can see my finger going right there, and it routes down there through the bottom. Now let's talk about the bottom of the subwoofer. As you can see, you've got the hole right here where your cable connections can come out, and I have the four feet on the subwoofer. And I'm using it because I find this to be just a little bit slippery if I set this on the carpet without the feet. Now these feet do come off, you can pull them off just that easily, and I have the rubber feet on there to protect the table, but these feet are spiked. Now this section does spin out so you can adjust the height of your subwoofer using the feet if you desire. Now let's listen to a couple of sound samples so you can hear how these sound. Those two audio samples were the same song. The first one was both the soundbar and subwoofer playing together. The second one was the soundbar only. So you had an opportunity to hear just the soundbar and its subwoofer, and hopefully you could hear the difference. But let me tell you, there is a difference, but the soundbar does sound good. But I'll touch more on that in the sound quality section. Now I'm going to rank this package in a few different categories from one to five. One being the absolute worst and five being the absolute best. The first category I'm gonna talk about is design, and I give this package a three and a half out of five. I like the soundbar in that it is 
nice and clean and simple. There's not a whole lot going on here. I like the fact that they put the connections on one side of the wedge shape so you can access them. And overall, like I said, it's a nice clean design. Now it is a bit long, so you will need to make sure your table or your wall can accommodate the length, but otherwise it does pretty well. Moving on to the subwoofer, I like the fact that it's nice and compact. I also like the fact that you have the door over here that hides away your cable, so cables, so you have a nice clean look. And I like the floor spikes. Now, this casing, uh, it's, I don't know. It could be a little bit better, but overall, I think this is a nice, clean, simple design that works, and that's why I give it a three and a half out of five. Now, the next category we're gonna talk about is sound quality. And I've been, <sighs> really thinking about how I want to actually give this a rating. And I think overall I'm gonna give this a five rating for the entire package because it works really, really well together. But let's start with the sound bar. The first thing I noticed when I was listening to the sound bar is that it has a nice natural presentation of voices, whether you're listening to music or watching movies or TV. I noticed that the actors, actresses, and artists' voices definitely sounded very, very natural. And I enjoyed that, I like it a lot. The voices were also nice and planted in the center when they needed to be, and specifically when listening to music, the music would fade out just a little bit so that you had the vocals right there in the center, which was nice. But if you needed a, vo a voice to shift one way or the other, it definitely did that, and I think the soundbar handles it all very well. Now let's talk about the bass unit of the soundbar. It works. Uh, let me just say that. I'm, I'm going to start with that. It works. And I say that because I turned on a movie. I, it was a Navy SEAL movie, I think, on Amazon Prime. And they had explosions and bombs and stuff like that. And I just started watching it. And I found that I found myself just watching the movie and not thinking about the bass representation. Sometimes when you watch a movie or something like that and it, don't have a, it doesn't have a lot of bass, I kind of notice it and it kind of annoys me. It, I didn't do that. It didn't do that with this soundbar. So I'm happy to say that. Now let's talk about this, the subwoofer that goes along with it. It is a nice accompaniment. And what I mean by that is it does add more bass, it does add more impact to this system. And honestly, it's nice and totally balanced with this soundbar. Because I also tried the soundbar with my SVS PB PB1000 subwoofer, which is a 10 inch subwoofer, and it played deeper than this. I mean, this doesn't play deep, that's one of my drawbacks, but it played deeper than this, but it was a bit much for this soundbar, I'm gonna be honest. So when the volume is set correctly on this, the 7060 subwoofer, and on this soundbar, it, it just plays well. They both play well together. And if you decide to buy the soundbar without the subwoofer, you've got a great soundbar. I mean, you really do have a 2.1 system. And I think that's one of the things that makes this soundbar work so well is that you actually have a dedicated subwoofer inside the soundbar versus most soundbars, you know, they try to make the two channel speakers actually do all the work. Where in this one, you don't have to worry about that. So I think overall this dessert, this, this is a five. This is a great soundbar and is a great soundbar package. Now let's talk about value. And from a value standpoint, I give this a four and a half out of five. I think the soundbar is a great value within itself. And if you add in the subwoofer, I also think the subwoofer is a great value because it is tonally balanced. But since they have a subwoofer out connection on the soundbar, you can add your own subwoofer and maybe you'll find one that works a little bit more to your liking because like I said in the sound quality section, this subwoofer doesn't go as deep as I'd like it to go, but it does balance out this sound bar really, really well. So from a value standpoint, I give this package a four and a half out of five. Overall, I like this sound bar. I think it is a great sound bar, especially for the price. Your vocals sound nice and natural. They're also planted. You can sit just about anywhere within your home theater and get a nice presentation. You don't only have to sit in the sweet spot and it has the ability to connect to most of the things that you wanna to connect to, so that is great. I also do like this subwoofer when attached to the soundbar. The soundbar does give you the ability to attach a different subwoofer if you wanted to, which is cool, but this, song, uh, this subwoofer is tonally matched, which is nice. I do wish the subwoofer played a little bit deeper than it does, but overall, I do highly recommend this whole soundbar package, the soundbar and the subwoofer, so if you wanna purchase it, please use those links in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. We'll talk to you next time.